Hello! We would like to welcome you to the Laramie K Optician Works Training Center, where a couple of weeks ago we did video about where distortion in the periphery of a progressive lens comes from. Turns out it's cylinder or unwanted cylinder, and we drew the cylinder shape on the board, and I had my little cylinder examples, and I got an email after that that said, I'm still not sure I get the entire concept of cylinder. And you know what? I can totally understand that. Well, I had a mild epiphany while I was out on vacation, taking a hike. Let's see if I can't make things a little bit clearer. What is it that I'm always going on about? Visualization. So I found the biggest chunk of cylinder that I could find on Amazon and let's see if that helps us visualize the concept. While I am thinking about it, super, super important here for any of you who are thinking about contact lenses and the NCLE, you must, must, must understand cylinder or as it is known in contact lens applications, toric lens design. All right, two things right off the bat. One is I think that we can all agree that this, our little cylinder example that Kevin Count left behind for us, does look a whole lot like this. The other thing right off the bat is even I am going to stumble with language here because this is really a hard concept to grasp. This is Lenzita. Lenzita, say hello to our folks at home. And Lenzita is going to help us with visualization of this concept. Now, if Lenzita woke up in the morning and decided she was going to climb Mount Sphere instead of Mount Cylinder, it wouldn't matter which one of the parking lots that she started from. Regardless if she started from parking lot white, green, blue, yellow, or red, her climb up Mount Sphere would be the same. It would be the exact same distance from the parking lot to the top, and it would be the exact same amount of effort required to get there. That would be our Mount Sphere hike. Now, when she decides that she's gonna climb Mount Cylinder, everything changes. Depending on which parking lot she starts at, which radius or meridian she chooses to begin her hike, her hike is going to be a different experience. I think if we're looking at this, we can see that our yellow band is absolutely, positively, the steepest climb that she could possibly make up Mount Cylinder. It would be the steepest curve anywhere on the lens or the mountain, and it would be created by the radius of curvature that is the shortest. If she wanted to make her hike just a little bit easier, she would turn her body by a degree or two, and her hike would become longer. It would become easier because the radius of curvature that created the curve is longer. Hence, her distance would be longer, but it would be just that slightly bit easier for her to climb down. If she really wanted to take the easiest hike she possibly could, well, she'd park at the very top of the mountain. There would be no climbing. This would be flat, plano, zero. Of course, it wouldn't really be much of a hike. It would be more like walking along a railroad bed or something. And she'd never, ever reach anything on the other end. She'd never come down off of the mountain. She'd never be able to hike back around on a loop trail or anything. And she wouldn't really be climbing. She'd just be going for a walk. Now, if she wanted to get to the top of Mount Cylinder in the easiest way, but have a little bit of a climb, she'd follow the green band. This would be created by a very long radius of curvature. It would take her a very long time to hike, but it would take minimal effort. Now, we can use this to also think about the 30, 45, 60 rule. What is the 30, 45, 
60 rule tell us? Well, it tells us that halfway between our, our two principal meridians, our yellow and our white, are 90 degrees apart. Our red band represents 45 degrees, halfway between. What does our rule tell us? 45 degrees away, we have half of our cylinder value, meaning that if Lenzita parked at the bottom of the red trail and climbed up, her trip down would be twice as long and take exactly half the effort as climbing the yellow. Now, there's another piece to this. Well, there are two more pieces to this. One, and this is probably one of the hardest things to conceive, is that we divide a lens up into 180 degrees of possible position. If we take this, the, this shape, and we could dice it up into 180 individual pieces, each one of those slices that we pull out would still be a sphere. It would just be a sphere of that's created by a longer and longer and longer radius of curvature, creating a shallower curve. Steepest curve, shallower, 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 until we reach Plano. And I know that's an extremely hard concept to grasp, but let me see if I can't make that just a little bit clearer as well. If this doesn't give you an aha moment, don't worry about it. This really might not work for everyone. Another piece to this is that we work in minus cylinder form, and this is a plus cylinder. I mean, there it is, a perfect convex shape. The last step in this is turning this upside down or flipping it over to become minus cylinder. Let's see if this helps. As I have mentioned, I have struggled with this, but I think this is a pretty good way to look at it or think about it or visualize the concept. We can never get away from the nominal lens formula. If I have a spherical lens like this, and we just went over the spherical concept with the top half of our pink ball there, I'm gonna have perfect spherical curves on the front and the back to create the power that I need. If my lens powers call for a cylinder, a spiro cylinder lens, a lens designed to correct for astigmatism, I am basically placing my cylinder on the back side of that spherical portion of my lens. And I hope you can see that. I know it's not the easiest thing. Now, if we stop and think, we think of that Plano line there right down the middle, that is where the spherical portion of my lens would come through in the lens meter. I hope you can see that. That's my Plano meridian. If it's literally sitting on there, I put it in the lens meter and lined everything up the right way, like at 90, I would have my spherical portion of the lens coming through. Everywhere else, like our old friend here, I'm either going to be building down in power or up in power from my green to my red or my red to my green. The other piece is, as I just mentioned, we were looking at the cylinder this way, and that's, that's not what we do. We grind lenses in minus cylinder form, and I think that's a pretty good example of that. And we're basically doing this. I think you can see how that shape mimics that pretty well there. And we're putting that on the back side of that spherical portion of the lens, creating this pattern, this shape, or back to this, which is always the best way to look at this, a spiro cylinder lens two different primary meridians, a strongest, a weakest, always building up in power or building down in power. Of course, we've gone over that concept before. On behalf of Lenzita and myself, I hoped that helped. Make sure that every lens in your optical life, either with cylinder or without, comes from Laramie K. If you're watching us on YouTube, please hit that subscribe button down there in the corner. If you're watching us on Facebook, please give us a like, leave me a comment. I will see you again next week.